And then Mason Cole on his way out of Pittsburgh in a very shocking move. I think Mason Cole was a guy that you could have looked at as a cap casualty, could have looked at a guy that, you know, come June, he's not around anymore. Maybe you find a trade partner. Who knows? The Steelers decide to move on from him before the NFL combine, before free agency, well before really they have any real need to move on from Mason Cole. And immediately after they find out that, they have about $7 million in cap space to spend right now, so it's not a necessity to start clearing space with veterans. You heard the news of Mason Cole. I think you were as shook as I was. What was your uh, what was your response? What were your thoughts? Uh, well, my immediate reaction was, man, let's take a look at some of these centers that are available in the draft. Let's look at it yeah. even closer now than we were before. I think center always kind of seemed like a position of need, uh, and now it is obviously a position of need. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't know a whole lot about the free agent class. It doesn't seem like there are going to be a ton of options, even with uh, the increased salary cap number. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I'm looking directly at the NFL draft, and this suddenly becomes an even bigger week for the Steelers. It's not just, okay, we're finding another option at center maybe, but it's it's we got to find our guy, I feel yep. like, uh, here at the NFL Combine. And then in the NFL draft, they got to make sure they land them. Uh, it seems like there's a handful of guys. Uh, you know, There's a few names that are out there that could – that could kind of fit that bill, and uh, the Steelers got to make sure they get one of them because, I because th- this is not this is a move you, this is not a move you make unless you think you know your real center of the future is not only out there that is available for you to get now, but that you're you're almost guaranteed to land them because uh, yeah. this is a risky move to make uh, without you know a, a set backup plan already in place. I agree. I agree a hundred percent. That was my first thought as well. Is the Steelers have to have a plan like there has to be something somewhere where they were all sitting around going we are 100 percent confident that this is going to work out the way that we believe it is going to work out and that they will land i'm guessing their center of the future like you don't release mason cole for some mid-tier free agent right i don't think that that's the way that you'd go about it i think this is go big or go home and to be totally honest like maybe that is a big name i mean brian allen is the name that everybody keeps tossing out there as a potential landing spot for the Steelers, former Ram. I mean, Cody Whitehair, I believe, is out there as well. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's where you're going. But I think it's the NFL draft. I think that they have totally convinced themselves there are one, two, maybe three guys that they believe are instant starters, instant impact players, the next Marquise Pouncey, and they're going to get them. And I think that's what the NFL Combine is about to tell us. I think that is storyline number one is come Saturday, which is wild that they did that to us is that they they don't make the linemen talk until like dude it's like they don't even know what the pittsburgh steelers are searching for in this year's draft come saturday when we're talking to the offensive linemen do they only talk to the is there three centers that are like yeah i met with the pittsburgh steelers and everybody else is like no i haven't and what does it tell you if they if they met with everybody if they meet with all the centers what in your head does that tell you and does it change anything and does it concern you that maybe they're going to be a little bit more lenient than your original thought makes you believe? No, I mean, I think there are like four. I mean, I think I threw out on Twitter, like for those, those four top names, like if they yeah. talk to those top four guys, like I think that kind of aligns with what I'd expect. They're just doing their homework on the guys that are going to be right at the top of that draft class. I think the only thing that would really concern me is if they're also talking to tackles and guards and things yeah. like that. Um, you know, like the that, I don't know. That is that what that I, I think you could have convinced yourself prior to Mason Cole getting cut that that you know a tackle was a good use of a pick there. That um, you know maybe some of these first round corners were were useful to to talk to and see if they're and see if they are a good fit for you. But now I think it's got to be a center and it's got to be offensive line, especially just particularly center. Um, I don't think yeah. you can go really in another different direction. I mean, there's a chance. I, I mean, like. I feel like I've heard that uh, that Georgia center Van Van Pran has fall, fallen a little bit. Like he's yeah. out of the first round now. Um, Zach Frazier, second rounder. But I mean, I think there there's a limited number of guys who are right at that top, uh, and you've got to be talking to one of those, and you got to be talking to all of those guys. I think to be ready for to be ready to be flexible, given that you're in kind of a weird position with that pick number twenty, and you got to be ready to leap at at whoever's there. It's it's it just in my mind it's got to be a center in the first I don't know, two two rounds. I two feel rounds. like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think I agree. Cuz like I don't know how much competition you're going to have for those guys either. 
I agree. I agree. I don't think that you could. I, I just don't think you could go into the third round and say, well, we don't have a center yet, but we could. Yeah. We'll figure it out. I think those are and, and maybe that Van Pre guy, like I've seen him fall into the third round, maybe. But I still think that's a risk. Like, I think if you are not like, I don't think you release your starting center when you do not need to before the NFL combine, unless you are. Yep. We're getting Jackson Bowers Johnson or yeah. we're getting Zach Frazier. There's no questions. Here, here's a question. Is it possible that they're thinking about, you know, can Nick Herbig be a center, that, be a center, Maybe. starting center for them? Can, uh, I mean, James Daniels, I know, has had some experience there in the past. Or do you think that they're considering position moves at all? I, I think maybe. I think maybe. Does that make sense? Like, does it make, I, does, I mean, what one makes more sense? I feel like James Daniels. So James Daniels, I'm pretty sure played center in college. I'm pretty sure that's what he played at all, Iowa. And, has the most experience playing center of the two. Nate Herbig has some experience playing center, but he said last year, I mean, we talked to him a bunch of times during training camp, and he said, look, I'm just practicing because the first time that I snap a football to a quarterback in a while can't be in a game, you know? So it's mm -hmm. not like he's like an experienced center. It Does it make more sense to just say Nate Herbig, we trust Nate Herbig can develop into this, or does it make more sense to say James Daniels, who's played right, right guard for two years now for them, moves to moves to center yeah and I mean I mean also the, after the season that Mason Cole had I mean we we've been over this we love him to death but he's he didn't have the best year last year yeah, if, yeah. if one of these guys was able to step up and take over that role why didn't they do it during the season you know exactly. like why didn't why why would you wait so long to make a move like that so yeah I, I I agree with you it's a bit of a long shot I just that was in the back of my mind like can they be cooking up something in the back? I, don't I know. think people believe it. I think people, I think there are a lot of people out there who immediately speculated, oh, well, that, you know, that could be, that could be a possibility. And I think it is on the table. I definitely think it's on the table. I just, I don't know. Like, I just, I feel it's so drastic of a move that there has to, like, just the, who the Steelers are, who Mike Tomlin is, who they are so cautious. They are the most cautious human beings on the planet. They do not, you know, like, I just feel like you don't do this unless you're like, all right, we have one, their first round option has one guy. It's just big dude from Oregon, no neck. That's the one. That's the guy <laughs> they're going to get. I don't know, maybe. I think this week is huge to find out who they're talking to. I will be more intrigued if we get a wide base of the Steelers are talking to every single center in the draft. And then you're like, oh, OK, well, that's that's a lot of centers. You know, that's a lot. of. I thought it'd be very narrow to two, three, maybe four guys that they'd be real interested in very interesting week very interesting move that will i think we'll get an answer to by the end of the week